So as you guys have probably guessed, Nvidia launched the RTX 4060 Ti today. So um, as we jump into the benchmarks a little bit later on, um, there's gonna be a couple things to focus on with these charts. First is the $400 battle going on between the RX 6750 XT and the new 4060 Ti. I'm calling it the $400 battle, even though the 6750 XT is $419 MSRP on available on AMD's website. But I think that's close enough to compare it to, so I think that's gonna be a really good battle as we go into the benchmarks. And secondly, we tested the 3060 Ti and the 2060 Super, so we could see the generational improvements um, for each, each kind of car in each generation. If you have a 2060 Super, not really looking good. Maybe this is gonna be the perfect time to upgrade. EK Waterblock's Nucleus Series AIOs are a closed loop and maintenance free way to keep your CPU nice and cool for maximum performance. Compatible with the latest Intel and AMD CPUs, the Nucleus AIO comes in both the Lux Edition featuring ARGB lighting, as well as a dark version for a clean, light free aesthetic and an ultra clean look. Daisy chain fans allow for a super easy install, while the thicker cold plate provides an improved cooling experience versus the competitors. To see the full list of specs and sizes, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into the benchmark charts. So for our usual synthetics, uh, we ran Time Spy Extreme, and the 4060 Ti was about 9% faster than the 3060 Ti, 52% faster than the 2060 Super. So like I was saying, yeah, it's probably time for an upgrade if you have a 2060 Super. It was just a hair faster than the 6750 XT in Time Spy Extreme, which is interesting. Moving on to Port Royal, which is a ray tracing test. So you're gonna see the 6750 XT have a disadvantage here with its ray tracing cores. It was 14% of an improvement over the 3060 Ti going to the 4060 Ti. 2060 Super is left in the dust and 22% faster than a 6750 XT. So like I said, those ray tracing cores on the AMD side, especially in the 6000 series is just nothing to write home about. So it loses a lot of ground in the Port Royal benchmark. Moving on to real world testing. We're gonna start with no ray tracing first. So we threw Cyberpunk 2077 into the mix. At 1080p, the 4060 Ti is about 10% faster than the 3060 Ti, 50% faster than the 2060 Super. So again, huge generational gap over the 2060 and a decent one over the 3060 Ti. And it's about 9% faster than the 6750 XT, which is impressive because the 6750 XT is still a little bit more expensive than the 4060 Ti. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5 in 1080p, 20% faster than the 3060 Ti. In this engine, the 6750 XT actually catches up a little bit and gains some ground. It's only 3% behind the 4060 Ti. Same case in 1440p, the 6750 is again, only 3% behind the 4060 Ti. And the gaps remain about the same for the Nvidia cards as well. Gears of War 5, about the same story, 10% faster than the 3060 Ti, significantly faster than 2060, and about 5% faster than the 6750 XT. 1440p does not change anything either, just everything slides down um, pretty much the same down the scale, relatively. Borderlands 3 is an interesting title because it tends to be very, very AMD favoring. Uh, the 4060 Ti actually gained a lot of ground against the the old 3060 Ti with an 18% improvement, which is more than the average that we've seen. It's actually slower than the AMD 6750 XT by 11% in Borderlands 3. Like I said, Borderlands favors AMD cards. In 1440p, the AMD card actually does a little bit better by 12% over the 4060 Ti, and Nvidia cards follow suit 10% better than the 3060 Ti and 63% better than that 2060 Super. So that 2060 Super, I don't, I, I think Turing kind of didn't really age like fine wine. It's kind of, yeah, these numbers are kind of embarrassing for the 2060 Super. <laughs> yeah, in Guardians of the Galaxy, no ray tracing. It was only 4% faster than the 3060 Ti, which was interesting. Not much of a generational gap over there. Of course, the 2060 was way behind and it was, the 4060 Ti was still 15% faster than the AMD 6750 XT. Same case in 1440p, although the 6750 XT makes up a little bit of ground and the 3060 Ti gets to within 1%, which is I'd say margin of error at that point. And last but not least, wrapping up our non-RT tests, we ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider 
1080p, 17% of an improvement over its previous gen 3060 Ti, which is, that's, that's pretty nuts. At 1440p, it was only 12% faster. That might have something to do with the new memory subsystem and the L2 cache that they've uh, chosen for the 4060 Ti. But this was the only title that I really saw the older gen with its technically higher memory bandwidth uh, make up any ground against the 4060 Ti. So it almost seems like Nvidia's gamble on bigger L2 cache, slower memory bandwidth has been paying off. I haven't seen any re weird performance deficiencies from switching from 1080p to 1440p. And even though Nvidia advertises the card and just really pushed it for 1080p, like Jay said in the unboxing, this, this card is doing great at 1440p as well. Like there, it's, I wouldn't not call it a 1440p card. Moving on to ray tracing, which is gonna be interesting. The first title of course is gonna be Cyberpunk 2077. Now we're running the RT Ultra preset at 1080p and it was 18% of a performance improvement above the 3060 Ti. That's pretty huge. And not to mention, these are native benchmarks. Of course, we are not running any scalar tech. So no FSR, no DLSS, especially not any frame generation or anything. Although you do get those features with the 4060 Ti, which is gonna be a good selling point. Um, we have to test the cards rendering a native resolution so that we can test them apples to apples, or at least as close to apples, apples as we can. That being said, 18% raw horsepower improvement basically over the 3060 Ti really shows that the new RT cores are that much faster. And then you throw DLSS and frame gen on top of that, you're playing ray tracing at a 60 Ti class card with like actually good frame rates. In 1440p, uh, the gap narrows to 8%, so I think this might have to do with maybe the memory bandwidth advantage that the 3060 Ti technically has. In both resolutions, it's about 88, 87% faster than the 2060 Super, <laughs> just to show you how far the RT cores, the third generation RT cores on the NVIDIA cards have come. And it's 67% faster than the AMD 6750 XT. So, yeah, again, the RT cores are not that good on the AMD cards, unfortunately, so that's just what we're gonna see here. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider RT, which is significantly lighter of a ray tracing implementation than Cyberpunk 2077. The 4060 Ti is actually 19% faster than the 3060 Ti, so it almost seems like with this lighter RT implementation, the faster RT cores in the 4060 Ti can actually gain a little bit or even more of a lead over the 3060 Ti. 2060 Super is an embarrassing 74% behind, and the 6750 XT is actually punching decently for its for its weight on its RT cores at only 16% behind the 4060 Ti. But in 1440p, the 6750 XT gains a little bit of ground, bringing that gap down to 8% instead of 16% like it was at 1080p. So I think the 6750's 12 gigs of VRAM is helping out a little bit here. In Metro Exodus RT, uh, 1080p, 13% faster than the 3060 Ti, so decent generational improvement over there. Again, 2060 Super, way behind. 22% faster than the 6750 XT as well. And rounding up the ray tracing stuff, we have Guardians of the Galaxy with ray tracing mode on. 7% of an improvement over the 3060 Ti at 1080p, 5% over the 3060 Ti at 1440p. Unfortunately for the 6750 XT, it does not really do that well in this ray tracing test. And it was a 38% gap at 1080p and actually at 1440p as well, exactly the same, 38%. Corsair brings gaming to the next level with the Xenion 45 inch flexible OLED Xenion Flex display. With up to 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.03 millisecond gray to gray response time, motion blur canceling, anti-reflective coating, burn-in protection, and customizable bend based on user's preference, the Xenion Flex from Corsair allows gamers to truly tailor their display to their liking. Click the link below for more details. So wrapping up all those numbers. Now, when Nvidia sent us the uh, press deck for this launch, they promised 15% of an improvement over the 3060 Ti if you didn't count DLSS3 and frame generation, all the extra tech and stuff like that. They just basically said 1.15 times the performance of the 3060 Ti, just, just the performance, just raw performance, pixel for pixel. Adding up all the performance deltas that we did across all of our charts, uh, for 1080p non-ray tracing, we found that the 4060 Ti was on average 13% faster than the outgoing 3060 Ti. If you guys are curious about the 2060 Super, it was 58% slower. Now the interesting thing is, 
the 6750 XT at $419 MSRP right now is only 20 bucks more than the 4060 Ti's launch price. It was about 5% slower across the board. This is including the title that it did win in Borderlands um, than the 4060 Ti. So 5% is pretty dang close. Unfortunately, of course, if you're gonna be looking at running more RT stuff, then I would recommend the 4060 Ti. And yeah, both of these cards seem great at the $400 price point. Moving on to 1440p non-ray tracing, it was only 10% faster across the board over the 3060 Ti. And the 6750 XT actually closes the gap, I believe because of its extra VRAM, 12 gigs versus eight gigs on the 4060 Ti, to 2%. So if you're just looking at rasterization performance, you're not really looking to take all the bells and whistles and stuff, and you're okay with FSR2, instead of having DLSS3 plus frame generation, which is kind of a tough sell, then yes, these cards are pretty dang close to 1440p. Now, the fact that the 6750 XT is more expensive and you don't have the latest scaling tech and frame generation is a bit of a bummer on the AMD side, but I think it's close enough to call if you want to just fanboy for AMD and then get an AMD card, or if you just want to fanboy for Nvidia and get an Nvidia card. Now again, I mentioned that in ray tracing, the story is much different. And yes, across the board in our four ray tracing tests, the 6750 XT was about 36% slower. So it's not a fair fight in ray tracing at that price point for those two cards, unfortunately. As far as temps and power consumption were concerned, we saw a 55 to 58 degrees of a peak after running Heaven for 30 minutes to an hour <laughs> on our uh, open air test bench. Power consumption stayed at about 120 watts to that heaven test and acoustics, I mean, honestly, if it's in a case, it's gonna be super quiet. Like you're, you're gonna have to struggle to hear that if it's in a case, unless your case has absolutely no airflow and the card is just melting, then of course, yeah, the fans are gonna spin up and it's gonna die. But on the stock fan curve settings, just, it's just, it was whisper quiet. So in conclusion, if you're moving from a 3060 Ti, um, it's not that much faster. I mean, I guess you could do it if you really, really, really wanted frame gen and slightly faster RT cores. If you're moving from a 2060 Super, you're gonna love this thing. If you're moving from, if you're like pretty much every other gamer on the Steam survey and are moving from a 1060 or any other card that's lower than a 20 series class, this card is going to be a dope $400 that you can spend that's gonna last you a few years at least. The mix of performance and the technology that you get with DLSS3 and frame gen. Now while a lot of titles do not support DLSS3 features like frame generation yet, a lot of the ones that are focusing more on the visual spectacle things like Cyberpunk do support it. And so in those cases in which you're going to be trading off a lot of performance for visual fidelity, having a 60 tier card with these new frame gen technologies is actually really impressive because it allows you to mess around with those settings, crank the, just crank the fidelity as high as you want and still get appreciable frame rates with a little bit of trade off of a little bit of extra latency because of frame generation. Now, yes, the 6750 XT is right there with a 2% gap in 1440p and a 5% gap in 1080p. However, you don't get that option. Unfortunately for AMD, it's better to have an option and not use it, especially when games are going to start supporting that more and more in the future than it is to not have the option and then, you know, want, oh yeah, I wish I could just like add 60 to 70% more performance with frame gen real quick. So in closing, if you can pick one up at MSRP, um, I'm really hoping that you guys, that like this launch doesn't suck. <laughs> if you guys can pick one up for close to MSRP, I think it's gonna be an amazing card. And I feel like it has the potential to be the new 1060 that everyone kind of holds on to for forever because it was just punching above its weight. It's got a solid mix of features and performance. Sound off down below guys. What do you guys think of the 4060 Ti? I mean, I, I looked at those benchmark charts and I thought this was a really, really solid deal for 400 bucks. Hopefully they actually can launch at $400. Finally, we can get the latest technology at the actual price point where people are buying instead of just like, you know, oh cool, a 9990 came out. Like that's, it's great. Like I love that the MSRP is $59.99. It's so much cheaper than last year's. All right guys, sound off down below. What do you guys think of the 4060 Ti? And we will see you guys in the next one.